This video is sponsored by Skillshare.com. There's a saying that goes, the only things guaranteed in life are death and taxes. And I just filed a 2020 tax extension. So I guess the only thing we're left with is death. And by death, I mean dying trends, everybody. For fun, we're going to call it death drip. Death drips. I don't know, if you're not too careful, your closet finna get got. So uh, today we're just gonna take a tour of the fashion graveyard, all the biggest, cringiest, most overplayed, dying trends, just everything in the pack sun trash bin, all in one spot. And you also might realize you're holding on some death drips right now. But hey, wake up call people. Some of these you're gonna know, some of these you're not gonna know. Some of these you might not even know are dead. And that's why we're here. So we're just gonna start the tour of the fashion gulag off with a big one. The off-white belt. The McDojo black belt of swag. Which means it means absolutely freaking nothing. I feel like these things on cars gave off the same vibes as the off-white belt. I don't know if that's just me. Y'all look like a bunch of civics. Maybe even the ugly ones, you kind of look like these ones. It was fun while it lasted, man. Some good old off-white to start. You know what? Ha! We're just gonna do all the surface level off-white stuff. This stuff, all this crap, all this post Pyrex, Virgil trying to figure out what he even wants to do. I don't know, it's like when you break up with your ex and then you're kind of still doing the same ha! that you were doing anyways, but you just changed the title and you're kind of in this weird in-between phase where you just broke up and you don't know where the boundaries are yet. So you're still kind of doing everything that you were doing before and it's the whole reason you broke up but you're still doing it because it's kind of this weird in-between thing yeah none of, uh, none of that anymore we've moved on to cheese off-white which is probably the strongest phase yet you know and we're still kind of seeing design tropes from that pyrex phase of virgil into contemporary designs he's doing with louis vuitton but i think we've moved on to greater and bigger things as that phase is no longer with us we've officially broken up and now we're just friends I have nothing to say about this. I don't know why I included v -Lone friends into this. If this was a prison, this is solitary confinement. I don't know, v -Lone friends, they've done a collab with literally everybody under the sun. The friends reunion just came out. This might have been funny, maybe. Maybe as a concept in theory, as a treat, as a snack, maybe. In another universe, this happened. And it's going crazy on Grail right now. It's breaking the internet, but it didn't happen. Not that I would have wanted it to happen, but it might have been funny. It would have caught... Oh my god, I'm manifesting it. I don't know, moving on, <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna leave that in the ha! gulag. Ah uh, yes, yeah, CDG Play, ironic, because no one wants to play this game anymore. Ha ha! CD GG guys. No, game's over. CD's fucking nuts. Ah, oh, this was a fun game while it lasted, but it's officially Icarus itself and flown too close to the sun. I'm not gonna lie. We almost had a slight defibrillization over there when Travis wore a pair. It's kind of crazy, you know, it almost upstarted the heart, but I guess it was just a small little heart murmur as it's still here in the gulag today. I don't know, maybe if we slowed down and paced ourselves and had like one of those the fitness, fitness gram pacer, pacer test is, is a multi-stage aerobic, aerobic capacity, capacity test, test that progressively, that progressively gets difficult. Oh, maybe if we had one of those and slowed the f*** down, it might have been kind of fun. But everybody just went too hard, and now the G in CDG stands for gulag. Oh, and on the topic of pacing, joggers and zipper pants. These transitions are ridiculous. It's funny how these have also nothing to do with fitness, the same way that these have nothing to give your fit. I still think there are some cool variants with this type of silhouette for sure that give your bottoms some top energy, but I'm not talking about no Rick Owens, some no 11. I'm talking about this, the mall core design. This, this design and this colorway defines an entire generation that I was shamelessly a part of. I don't even hold back. I can still, to this day, hear Father Stretch My Hands Part 2 playing in the background as I wait in line at 2 a.m. on adidas.com slash Yeezy, all while daydreaming about meeting Emily Oberg in a gentrified Thursday Supreme line. But those days are freaking behind me and I choose not to look back. Oh my God, I'm manifesting it again. Um, on the topic of long lines, long line tees. Crazy. These transitions are ridiculous. Talk about top energy, huh? So uh, this was a lot of people's introduction to layering, which is nice. Personally, I never got into it because it made my body look like a ah! me character. Like I was waiting in line to play bowling, just 
I'm sitting in the me shop, just do 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 Nah, I'm good. I'm good. I want to look like this stupid picture of Shane Dawson. That's what I look like in some stupid long line tees. But it was fun, you know? There are a lot of people wearing it with like stripes, like all the fog stuff, a lot of earth tones. Some of them are even fun with that little stupid scoop at the bottom, you know? Your wardrobe was looking like an abandoned third grade Kid Picks project. But it was a lot of fun, man. Shout out to Kid Picks, we were vibing. Had people out here looking like some cool math games. You know what I mean? Anyways, moving on to an adjacent pairing with this, we got biker jeans, man. If you're gonna go cool with the top, you might as well go cool with the bottoms, you know? Ball Mons. Oh man, classic. Also, these were the kind of the introduction to people pronouncing these French fashion houses properly. You know what I mean? Like you think you're pronouncing Saint, it looks Saint Laurent, right? You think you're pronouncing it right your whole freaking life. No, this is what it's supposed to sound like. Saint Laurent. Yeah, right? Surprise, surprise, no fucking kidding. Anyways, I thought these were so cool when they came out, man. High Street, never heard of her. But as fast as they came in, they left. I guess why that's why they call them biker jeans. <laughs> balm on, more like balm off. Ah, we're getting comfortable here. You know what? This would have been funny if I was a tour guide. If I was like on one of those stupid double decker, you know what? It's we're, it's too late in the video. You know what? Fuck, we're gonna do it. We're on a double decker tour bus, folks. If you look to your left, you'll see the eighth wonder of the world, the e-boy trend. Ah, yes, this. My favorite part about the e-boy trend was the semantics. Uh, was it post grunge? Was it neo punk? Was it pseudo emo? I don't even know, man. Ah, but we can argue over what we're gonna call it the entire freaking day. But we, you know what, we can't deny that ravenous, almost pandemic-like effect it had on fashion in 2019. It was crazy. It was kind of like a pandemic. Pre-pandemic, pre-COVID pandemic, it was like if the CDC was TikTok instead of the C... And if, <laughs> and if Dr. Fauci was Lil Peep, and instead of wearing masks, people wore this stupid Sid Vicious padlock on a chain thing that everyone still kind of wears. But sadly enough for this pandemic bad boy, the vaccines came early. And by vaccines, I mean capitalist fashion taking advantage of it and watering it down, huh? Getting a double dose of gentrification right there, buddy. And folks, if you look to your right, you'll see Drake in his stupid fucking Chrome Hearts Rolls Royce. Chrome Hearts, classic. I feel like there's always this magnanimous allure with this brand. You don't really know what's going on. It's mysterious, but there's also the sense of respect. There's like this, and you just get all this power, all this force to be reckoned with within the culture and you encapsulate it and compartmentalize it to hats that say fuck, right? Oh, I'm sorry, not just hats that say fuck. Rings that also say fuck. Sometimes they say sex. Sometimes they say, fuck you. Look, I get it. There's a lot of history here and I love it. I'd love to understand it more, but I don't think a lot of people understand that. And I feel like they treat Chrome Hearts like CDG Play as there's so many different tiers to Comme des Garçons, but people are like, that's that heart brand, right? It's the same thing with Chrome Hearts. It's like, oh, those are the trucker hats that say, fuck. and you can't have the novelty if everyone does it. You can't have your cake and eat it too. So, but yeah. As big as a grip as this brand has on the culture, everyone just kind of compartmentalizes it to those hats and disposable bits and some introduction to 925 Silver, which is cool, but you can take the chrome away from our hearts, but you can't take our hearts away from the chrome. Oh, yep, there he goes. That's Drake. That's, uh, and folks, if you look, uh, this is getting long. So I'm just gonna do a speed run of all the shoes. Ah, yes, all the fallen soldiers, all the duos that have permanently left the rotation for all the pairs downstairs. You know what I mean? As in they're in your basement and you're never wearing them. Also, no, they're dead. So there's pairs downstairs in hell where we are. So we're just gonna start with a big problem. Daddy issues, dad shoes. Remember these ones? Everyone had kids next door vibes with this. I also thought these were cool. I never got into them because I looked lame in them again. And yeah, I appreciate them from afar. And now I can appreciate them from even further. Sock runners. Cool, I also had a pair too. I personally still like the format of having a sock-like silhouette for a shoe, but not like that. I'm talking about the Balenciagas, right? I had a pair, they're comfortable, they're so cool, but everyone had them, and nowadays, they deserve to get lost in the dryer with the rest of my socks. I do miss it though. I mean, we are kind of seeing a renaissance of it with this like, low polygon rendering meta of shoes that kind of just look like, they all, these shoes that look like NFTs, you know what I mean? 
I am taking part in them. I have this pair by leaks. They're comfortable as hell. And you know, they might go out of style. I don't care. I'm investing early, you know, or I'm here for a good time, not a long time. If crypto's taught me anything, it's just, I don't know shit and I don't give a fuck. And on the complete other side of comfort, we got street Chelsea's. These ones where everyone had this pseudo smart sense of dress when you realize that these fits, all of these fits could have had the same exact vibe, if anything, been elevated with a pair of Jordan 1s. The Chelsea boots don't add anything different. They're kind of just like an alternative to the Jordan 1s. Look at this. Bam, this fit right here. Cool, right? He's smart. He's intellectual. Nope, just throw on a pair of Jordan 1s and it's the same thing. Also, Jordan 1s had resale in the market. Nobody gives a shit about your Bottega Veneta's. And I still like Chelsea's. I like Chelsea's. One of my favorite pairs is my all black leather pairs of St. Laurent's and I wear them all the time. But I'm talking about people that would buy the ASOS Chelsea's and wear them with ripped zipper jeans and a flannel. That trend has, this, that ship has sailed. And lastly, how could we forget Boost? Oh, you know what? We're in heaven now. Just for the sake of this last bit, we're in heaven, okay? We're in heaven. So remember when people used to talk about Boost? Like it's like walking on clouds, right? And it's funny how it's come full circle is now, what do you think the clouds in heaven are made of? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now that's kind of poetic. I don't know. Probably not. I mean, I don't know if, how, if that bit's going to land or not, but they had a good run. Anyways, the trends are coming and going like crazy. They're volatile. The market's going stupid. I feel like every new trend is like a new meme coin on the market. It's just pump and dump in terms of style. And I feel like CEG cons are like Bitcoin, you know, it's like the original one where it's kind of cool sometimes. And then sometimes someone will tweet about it or talk about them and they're cool again. It's like when Travis wore them, it's like when Elon tweets about Bitcoin. So if I'm going to give you some sound drip investing advice, invest in yourself and you can do that with the help of the sponsor of this video skillshare.com go 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 skillshare is the best place to learn absolutely anything they got over hundreds of classes for whatever you'll need and personally i've been using it to take care of my goddamn plants look at this first of all look at the growth this plant is over six feet two i'm so tired to talk about death today we're going to talk about life i've been watching this course by chris satch from the seal which is actually where i got this bad girl right here look at this cutie and I've been taking care of all my plants. It's summer, it's all coming around and nothing's more fulfilling than raising a high a metaphorical child over here. So forget all the dying trends, keep some life in your life, you know? So you too can go find something fulfilling by going to my link and signing up the first 1000 of you to sign up, get a free month. You get a whole month, a whole month of Skillshare Premium for free. And yeah, if I'm gonna talk about anything being a good investment into your life, it's invest in yourself and go find something fulfilling like I did. Also, summer's coming around and, and COVID's opening things back up and all these cool things look good on your dating profile. And if you wanna have fun over the summer, Skillshare.com, you'll look cool on your dating app. You can do something for fun with a girl, maybe a guy, I don't know, it doesn't matter. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Everybody go get something fulfilling now. And yeah, thank you for coming on the tour of the Fashion Gulag, I hope. And I hope you didn't see yourself there in this. And if you want some life, go watch my freaking podcast. It's at podcast on everything. I was with my friend Sydney, she's great. You might like her more than me. I guess you're gonna have to find out by watching it at, at podcast on everything. Thank you for watching. Now go watch my podcast.